Steve Dotto here. Thanks for joining us today. Today we're going to be taking on a topic which I absolutely love. Google has, within the Google Drive, of course, a series of different office tools for us. So they've got the word processor, the spreadsheet, and the presentation software. <gasps> All stuff that we've used before. It's great, but <sighs> it's not that exciting. What is exciting is Google Forms. You probably don't know about Google Forms. I'm going to show you about Google Forms. And when we're done today, you're going to be happy you learned about Google Forms. All right, are you ready to get going with Google Forms? This might be a little bit of a longer demo, so uh, grab yourself a coffee and, uh, and settle in. Because I'm going to show you how to, first of all, create forms, but then I'm going to show you how to distribute them, some of the different ways we can distribute them. Because a form is only good if it's in the hands of people who need to use it. So how do you go about creating the form in the first place? Just go into your Google, your G, your Google account, usually through Gmail, and there we've got this little Google Launcher, which is a kind of a new, newish thing that allows us to gain access to all of the different assets that Google has available to us. I'm going to go into Drive here. And once we're into Drive, we can then access all of our different tools, all of our different online tools. So here we can create a new document, going under the Create menu, of course. Create a new document, a new presentation, spreadsheet, and up oh, there is our target today, a form. When we start creating a form, the first thing that they'll do is actually they'll create an untitled form for you. And then since it's the first time you've used it, probably they'll pop up with a little offer to walk you through it and give you a guided tutorial. Go ahead and use that <clears throat> uh, if you haven't learned enough from me or if you, wanna, if, you want to, uh, if you want to learn a little bit more. Uh, then you can choose a theme. So they, they allow us to dress up the form. Actually, a fair bit. They've got actually kind of some nice little forms here. And it gives you an idea of where the forms can be used. Just taking a look at the at the forms that they're offering us to, kind of the the, uh, the templates that they're offering us. Things like invitation forms for birthdays, uh, and what else have we got here? Wedding things, cookies. Oh, order order forms for cookies, like if you're selling cookies or for a fundraiser for school, things like that. The places that you can use forms are so many, whether it's sign up forms for teams or permission forms for school, or uh, we're gonna create a little sign out form uh, for, uh, let, let's say that we're a, a school and we have a library and we have a certain number of projectors that are available that teachers can sign out. Uh, so I'm going to create a sign out form for it. I'm not sure it's the best use of it. There might be better ways to do it, but it allow us to look at some of the different fields and the different ways to do it. So I'm going to choose because I like simple elegance. I should choose the wedding cake, shouldn't I? I'm not going to choose the wedding cake. No, nor am I going to choose purplicious. I'm going to choose magazine because it looks awesome. And I'm going to name the form. Uh, AV sign out, AV sign out. There we go. So let's have a look at my AV sign out. It should be two different words, shouldn't it? Two separate words, AV sign out form. And let's make that O capital, just so that's nice and neat. Because what's gonna actually happen with this form is I'm gonna create the form and then I'm gonna embed it below. So if you're looking, if you're viewing this video on our Dotto Tech on my blog post, it'll be embedded in the blog post. So you'll actually be able to see the form and play with it after I've uh, after I've created it. I thought that'd be a nice little extra feature. So we are in AV Sino. Now, it's a really simple process of just asking questions. What do you need people to fill out? What, what information do you need? So you can ask them questions. And here we can see right in the form description, if we click here, if we choose here, we, we can choose the type. There it is, question type. The type of data that we want to collect. We want to collect text. So that would be like somebody's name. A paragraph, if we want them to write something. Multiple choice, which is going to be awesome. We're going to, we're going to add multiple choice in a few moments. So let's just start with it being a text. And the question, the first question is, oh, there it is. The, the question goes, your name. Okay, and you can add help text. What is your name? And so that once that's done, we say done, and we're ready to add a next item. We add our next item. The next question is, we won't even go, you'd go classroom or division or, or whatever. You, you'd ask other questions. But we want to say, okay, you want to sign out something from the, uh, from the uh, as far as our projectors or different AV gear. So we're going to make this a multiple choice question. And what would you like to, what would you like to borrow? What gear do you want with a capital W? Well, let's do that. I'm strange. Okay, option one. Projector. 
Hmm. I'm just thinking, should this be multiple choice? It should be check boxes. Why? Because check boxes allow us to check multiple things. Multiple choice, I think, only allows us to check one. A little form, little form trivia for you. Projector. Uh, let's add another option, which would be, uh, let's say, uh, mi microphone. And let's say a third option is a screen. And you could just go on and on. You could say power bar. Now I'm talking about power bar, the thing to plug in, not power bar at the food. Just so you know, because this is there's no corporate, there's no corporate sponsor behind this particular video today. It's just me, you, and well, a little bit about Google, I guess. Okay, so once we've done that, we set the second question. What gear do you want? Now we can add an item. So we can add, uh, in, let's say, let's collect their email address. Um, email. So we ask them to enter their email address. Next question on the form. Oh, I know what we can do. When do you want it? Let's put in a date. Date. Include year, include time. Let's include time. There it is. So when do you want it? I think this will allow people to choose a date of when they want it. And we'll make this a required question. Oh, with all of the forms, as you fill out the form information, you can make it a required question as well. Now at any point here, this is where it gets kind of cool. At any point here now in the process, we can click on view live form and it's going to show us, I believe, what our form looks like. Isn't that nice? I think it is. Let's jump back into the form itself and you get an idea of all of the different data types that the form will support now. But before we leave that, you can actually dress the form up a fair bit, kind of doing page layout things by clicking beside the add items, and you've got a layout option here where you can create section headers, add images, and even add explainer videos that explain exactly what you're looking for within the form. So you've got a lot of options as far as dressing the form up. But creating the form is only the first of three steps in the whole form cycle. We create the form, then we have to distribute the form. We have to get the form out into the hands of the people who need to fill the form in. Then we need to collect the data from the form. So let's take a look at those other two parts, which are crucial in form success. And so sharing the form, getting the form out there and distributing it, dead simple. And all of it is encompassed in one simple dialog box. When I click here on send forms, it brings up a simple little dialog box, Google Forms does, that shows me all the different ways that I can share this form. Of course, the easiest way is to send an email with the form in it. So if we do this option, what'll happen is an email will go out, go out with a form embedded in it that people can fill in and return in reply to right there. But also included in that email will be a link to a web page so that if you want to view it in a browser, you can use that link. And this is the same link. This is the exact same link here. I'll just copy this link. And this link here will take you so that you can access the form through any web browser. You can also share the link by Facebook, G, uh, Google Plus, or Twitter so you can send it out to people and share. And all of those people will access the link the same way by going into a web browser and just basically, or but just by clicking on the, on the, on the form itself and that will bring up the form in their web browser. Dead simple, works for mobility, works for desktops, works for notebooks, works for tablets. You're in great shape in all of those environments. Let's just go back to the form itself for a second, or sorry, sorry to the sign out area. Let me just send the email to my email account. So it's a .otech demo at Gmail. There we go, and I will send that. Now before I leave this area, I'm going to go back into the embed code here, or back into the form, and I'm going to show you the embed code. The embed code is the third way that we can share the form, and it's technically the, uh, technically the most advanced, but it's also very, very cool. What this does is it creates an HTML embed, which if, you've, if you're a blogger, if you've used WordPress, you understand, and if not, what this effectively does is it creates a little piece of code that allows me to embed the form into any blog post or web page. Dead simple and absolutely spectacular as far as functionality. So I've got the post. <laughs> Let's see. follow me through. This post here, Google Forms are awesome. This will become my blog post on the Dottotech website once I finish this video. I'll, I'll be embedding the, the, the video that I'm creating right now in this post. And then beneath that video, I am going to embed the form. We can see that the form is basically grayed out because we can't see it in, in this format, but I'm going to save this as a draft. 
Later on, I will actually publish it, but we can preview what it's going to look like in the post. So I'm going to go click on preview post. So here's my website loading. So here's all the wrapper of my Dottotech website and there's the form. So when you visit this and I've got a link to it right here underneath in my information box right beneath me right here. But if you click on that link, it will take you to this post and it will now incorporate our video and a few other pieces of information that I add. And this form will be in the very bottom of it. So it shows you that it does work. You can actually fill it in and it won't do any good because you can't actually borrow anything from me. Let's go back to the email. And there is the email that we just sent to ourselves. So I can click here and here we see the form. So there's the link that'll bring us to it in a web browser. And here's the form online right in my email. So I can just type in, I want it's Steve and I want to borrow a projector and a screen. And I'm going to put in my email address, which is And then I'm going to choose the date that I want to have to borrow the projector. And then I click submit and I'm getting, I'm brought into a nice little uh, screen that tells me that I have submitted the requ request and it's now been collected. So that's the last area. So we've done a design, we've designed it, we've distributed it. And now we have to collect all of the information. And how do we collect it? It's so simple. We go back into the form itself and there we click on responses, view responses, and it brings up all of the different responses that we created. So here it is, the timestamp, the name, what I'm asking for, the email address, the date, all of the information that we've asked for that we've included in the, in the form is collected here for us so that we can now use it in any way we want because this is basically a spreadsheet. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love this feature. It's uh, Google Forms is one of the real hidden gems uh, of free tools in the online world. It's robust enough, it's, it, it's, it's comprehensive enough that it can suit a wide variety of tasks. People buy software packages, they buy services to do this exact same sort of stuff, never knowing that it's lurking right there in their Google Docs account. I hope you found this video interesting. It was, it was fairly comprehensive and a little longer than normal. So if you stayed with me to the end, kudos to you. I appreciate it. Uh, while I wrap things up, uh, a reminder, first of all, there's a link here to the post which will include the, which will include the form. So you can see that the form is indeed live and does work in the ways that I said, uh, as well just beneath me is the opportunity for you to subscribe to our channel, which we appreciate. And also the opportunity to become one of our patrons. Uh, we use Patreon to fund this show and, uh, and fund these videos. And if you want to become a part of our community and support our ongoing efforts, it would be greatly appreciated. And it's all explained there. If you click on the Patreon link, it takes you to our Patreon page and explains all the different perks of being, of being a patron of Dotto Tech and what we will do with your hard earned money. Should you choose to share it with us with that, I hope you've learned a lot today. I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming the castle.